Let me know when to start. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so we're good. We're good to go. Okay, yeah. so uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to my fellow uh, researchers at SAS and uh, welcome to general audience who might be with us today. So my name is Valeria Graziano. I'm one of the fellows uh, uh, finishing the, the residency at SAS now. And it's my pleasure to introduce today's guest speaker um, who is Dr. Giuseppe Micciarelli. Uh, who is a political philosopher and a legal sociologist uh, based at the University of Salerno in Italy uh, and also collaborating with the Universitas Marcatorum and University View of in Venice. And uh, maybe I can briefly introduce Giuseppe by saying that his research uh, focuses on the transformations of contemporary democracy and the creation of new institutions across two distinctive uh, strands uh, one of which arises from the neoliberal revolution, but also, on the other hand, from the processes initiated by social movements and civil society. And specifically, uh, Giuseppe, uh, or at least for me, the work of uh, Giuseppe that I know that uh, really stru struck me as uh, really groundbreaking and, and important is the way various ways uh, through which he has contributed to building uh, new legal tools uh, that are usually called uh, civic and urban use, and he will say much more about what that means in practice, um, around uh, specifically uh, allowing um, local governments and municipalities to um, be able to recognize the values produced by uh, community-led initiatives for short. Um, specifically, Giuseppe has been involved uh, in the city of Naples, uh, in an experiment uh, around the civic and urban uses uh, that uh, has been going on since uh, 2012, if I'm not wrong, Asilo Filangeri, which uh, was an occupied uh, ex-convent uh, that also became a hub, providing all kinds of cultural, political, but also welfare provisions to a number of uh, actors of the city. So, I think we're gonna explore a bit uh, uh, such systems of urban co-governance based on uh, principles and ideas of the common and really trying to grapple with what this means in practice, in political praxis and in legal, uh, in legal praxis, which Giuseppe names uh, a form of hacking of the law itself. Um, and from my perspective, so I'm not sure what Giuseppe uh, approach will be today into this topic, which is of course, uh, uh, bringing together various aspects around uh, urban politics and the transformations of cities that have been characterizing the last decades. Uh, but for me, maybe just to, uh, before leaving the floor to Giuseppe, uh, it's um, this substantive work uh, with the law as a process that, to make uh, use value recognizable and legible as an alternative to the mo prevailing model of private public partnership, it's, it's of immense value to move forward. Um, and specifically my project, I've been examining uh, bottom-up uh, plebeian approaches to uh, illegalism through this uh, Yugoslavian expression of snaži se druže, which means figuring out, com figure it out, comrade. And I was, uh, and I'm, I really benefited from engaging with, uh, with kind of how this similar problems come up in contemporary society when um, such illegal practices can actually be seen as prefiguring maybe also what is lacking in bureaucracy, in bureaucratic systems, in, in, in welfare systems and, and so forth and so on. Okay, so thank you, Giuseppe, and uh, we will, let you uh, go on for a while. And usually we have a classic format of taking some Q&A at the end and comments. And uh, if people prefer, I'm also very happy to read questions if you like to uh, type, them, type them in chat or otherwise we will just open the floor at the end. Thank you. So thank you to, to you, Valeria, for the, this introduction and obviously to the world group. I. All right, I will start directly. <laughs> I will uh, 
try to focus on the relationship between some grassroots political practices in urban areas and the neoliberal governance of the cities. So yes, I will speak about urban commoning, but that's the end, because I think that we have to focus these kind of experiences in their wider context. In my opinion, um, participation, collaboration, and know their keywords and often key practices that have been arising in the last years in many of our cities, just think not only about urban commoning, but about the different topic of new municipalism, for example, for instance. So are neither revolutionary itself, or on the contrary, perfectly integrated and functional to the political system. I think that the core question is how these different practices can challenge and change some rules and rationalities that uh, uh, are at the core of the neoliberal system. Oh, so what kind of rationality? For instance, competition as a regulatory criteria, not only for the economic production, but uh, as a form of life. For instance, some criteria for monetary valorization of public assets and real estate, or even the meaning of collaboration paradigm between citizenship and public administration. All these topics are topics where there is a neoliberal rationality. And this is also a little bit tricky because uh, uh, we risk to answer to this with a sort of kind of uh, ideological approach, a simplistic approach. Let's say, I don't like competition, I like cooperation. Yes, it's beautiful. We we'll all like cooperation, but we have to understand a little bit better. What does it mean that this rationality is pervasive, is interjected, or let's say with Michel Foucault is part of a subjectification process of individuals, of course, but also subjectivation process of institution, civic and social organization, and even private corporation. So a legal and political hacking strategy try to answer to this. Here hack uh, means in my perspective to enter in a software let's say in a realm that is not your. In this case, we are speaking about the system of the governance, in particular at the city level. Here in this system that is not your governance system, we are not only speaking about how oh, is beautiful the governance of urban commoning experience. We will speak maybe about that, but after, because this place, these experiences are inside other system. So here hack means try to insert some kind of alterations, perhaps not immediately perceivable as important changes. So it's not a question of use these changes in order to bettering the governance system. Let's say like in um, uh, traditional reformistic approach, sorry to make this kind of simplification, but this just to understand ourselves, or maybe to point this element as something that can, at the end, destroy in a revolutionary way the governance system itself. Neither is this. In my idea, this is just making it work, the system, in a way that is a partially different from what the people that have made the software have imagined it. So changing its guidelines, making it perform operation that lead to results different from those who expected by those who design that kind of software. Theoretically, this perspective from a, a political philosophical approach uh, can be um, called as a kind of alternative governmentality, used another time Michel Foucault approach. Foucault spoke about a sort kind of socialist governmentality 
very, very few, but we can after maybe speak about that. But from a social legal perspective, this means work on two levels, and this can be more concrete. The first is that I reflect, and I am not only one, there are many people, many researchers, in particular in Naples, in the experience that Valeria quoted before, that is Lazilo, but in the network of uh, Italian emerging urban commons. So there are very, very <clears throat> many skilled people that try to reflect on the organizational forms of this cry of urban commoning experience. So this is maybe more traditional because if, uh, even if you read the work of Elinor Rostrom, for example, to speak about mainstream, you can have an approach where you study what works, what doesn't work, why some experiences of self-organization fails while other experiences succeed. So this is an important uh, approach when you study every type of commons I work especially on urban one, but even if you work on natural common resources or other, this approach is a perfect approach that work on which kind of rules, which kinds of raising institutions are able to product some kind of governance that works. So I work on this, perfect. I work on this in my political perspective, because when I see to an, an urban commoning experiences, I'm not only a jurist, but I am also a political philosopher, or I try to do it. So I try to understand the difficult for the people to make themselves interdependent. But I do also another thing, that I study how to make these small experiences scale up. And here comes one of the first uh, uh, issue. I try to share my screen and I will start this part of the presentation. Mm -hmm. Here we go. When we spy, speak about scaling up, we can have many, many uh, different perspectives. From, uh, for example, uh, an, an author that I love, Murray Bookchin, uh, you know who is him, he, he was speaking and thinking about libertarian agoras as, as, as a place where uh, people can experiment a sort kind of direct democracy. Nuri Bookchin is an important author. Uh, nowadays, in Rojava experience, as you know, he is one of the point of reference, even because Abdullah Shalam read Nuri Bookchin, reinterpreted it. So we are not speaking only about a theorician. He was an activist. He was a great man that worked on the ground. The problem is that in his thought, the idea of scaling up is a little bit, uh, let's say, simple because he say, all right, we can imagine this kind of uh, agora uh, like direct democracy, but what about more general issue and topic? So he say, all right, we can imagine circles of agora, even wider and wider. And even if you see to Elinor Ostrom's work, uh, one of the eight, the, the, eight, the number eight design and principle that she works, uh, uh, have the, this idea that we have, uh, uh, we can imagine this uh, circular centric uh, uh, hypothesis of governance. So small governance, a wider governance, and in this way you go uh, in a sort kind of uh, replication of uh, past and copy structure. It's interesting that this kind of approach uh, is also the approach of totally different theoricians. For example, Santi Romano, that is a very conservative jurist at the beginning of uh, the last century, is an Italian one, but we can speak about also Michel Rio and other neo-institutionalists. And in this case, Santi Romano speak about the state as an institution of institution. The joke is similar. And the joke doesn't function because a state and an institution is not like a matrioska. It's very, very much more, more is different. So in this way, I think that uh, we have tried to uh, shift and start to ask ourselves, all right, 
taking in consideration that institutions are something that are complex, let's uh, imagine uh, how in this uh, and why in these last few years, there is also from a left-wing perspective, social movement perspective, a really big interest around the institution. The first idea is the perspective that values the capability of social movement to produce some kind of politically autonomous space. I quoted, for example, you know, uh, Akin Bey, Taz as temporary autonomous zone, but even Judith Butler that I love spoke in a sort kind of performative idea of the movement of Occupy. So if we can make a, a critic, as Jody Dean said, uh, and is quoted by uh, two authors that you know, Goldman Sachs doesn't care if you rice chicken. All right, is maybe a little bit uh, uh, too much uh, uh, bad as a quotation. But yes, sometimes there is this trouble. So we need to have expertise, and I do that daily, on what does it mean to build another kind of institution, to build a politically autonomous space, but be careful because autonomous political space itself first doesn't exist because in my opinion, nothing is separated from the rest of the world. And secondly, uh, we have to understand how to uh, create problem maybe to the system. Uh, and for this reason, there are many, many uh, scholars that are studying, for example, around the institution of the commons, Dardot and Laval, Negri and Dart, and obviously they are not the same, we can speak about their differences, but the main question that I pose to them is, all right, perfect, I also experiment about institution of the commons, and we will arrive at the end, but how this new institution intersect the normal and traditional institution, because this connection is the place where we can imagine the hacking perspective, in my opinion. So if we move to the more complex governance system of the city, even here do you have very important author, for example, Saxia Sassen, for example, David Harvey. Uh, and here, the main problem is that probably um, they focus on uh, a certain kind of, diff of cities. That is a big cities, not necessarily a Western. It can be a, a, a world city, as Sassan says, but uh, uh, many of us live in different cities. So it's more important to understand how the governance can work itself, uh, even in other uh, place that are the cities that every, everywhere we live in. Uh, I uh, have worked on this topic in this uh, chapter of a book that will be soon uh, printed. So I will not speak about that, but we can turn back uh, analyzing the fact that nowadays we are speaking even in the social movement about governance because today governance is a problematic topic is the shift from government to governance that let us how to understand to make this work. So let's go now to the place that we are speaking about. So for example, these are some uh, places that are barracks, uh, brownfields, uh, former places, I call them X places that were abandoned buildings that at a certain point before commoning experience, let's, apart, let's put apart another time commoning experience, but before they become a trouble for the uh, state and for the city government. And they become a trouble because we are speaking about places uh, that are uh, very huge and are probably this kind of X places small, big, are in very, very different cities. I worked in all, all, more than 100 case studies, obviously not only studying them, but a lot of time going there to make an assembly, to discuss with the activists. So it's not something only of the Western Europe. 
So what I, is interesting, and now I want to just to focus about that, is that when we speak about this kind of um, uh, empty building, uh, we have to face some kind of cognitive bias of the neoliberal rationality. The first uh, bias that I'm speaking about is the balanced budget. Uh, you have to know that I am not only a scholar or a bad scholar uh, and a bad activist, but I, for example, give some consultancy to uh, city government. Uh, and uh, I am also the board member of a public foundation. So I try to intersect uh, the different problems from different perspectives. When we are facing the, the problem of an empty building and we want to revitalize that maybe doing the civic activities and all what we love, if you point yourself from the perspective of a public officer, the thing are different. In particular, uh, the element of a balanced budget, uh, I hope to say so, Valeria, help me, pagheggio di bilancio. Yes. Perfect. Uh, is something that is a cognitive bias of neoliberal rationality. This can explain finance fair play in soccer. Everywhere there is this idea that you are fair if your balance is zero. So you can, in your football team, pay for the income of Ronaldo 15 million of euro playing against a soccer team that have uh, the, the maximum budget of uh, 1 million, it's fair. So you understand that also the criteria of fair is, is a little bit tricky. And here, just to say that in the city, one of the outcome of the neoliberal revolution is that each public authorities have a greater financial autonomy. So there have always been the budget of each, for example, local entity, the budget of the municipality, the budget of the department. This is not me. But the, these kind of budgets um, are changing. Is a, a contability also issue and changing. For example, house companies taxation transfers of funds between state and cities are becoming more and more independent and difficult to be made. So the balanced budget rules um, are also uh, changing, for example, because uh, there are um, a sort kind of, um, uh, where is it? Fondi di accantonamento. So, for example, they are changing the criteria of how to make a budget. In my public institution, uh, in the last few years, uh, we have to take more and more money apart, doesn't, don't using it, in order to have a sort kind of obligatory mandatory reserve in the case in which we lose trials. All right. So this means that they are changing also all the rules of accountability. This is an European uh, topic. It's not uh, the Neapolitan problem. So this may appear less political. No, but this is the core of the governance. And uh, OK, let's say that another element, very, very, I go fast. Another element is that when we speak about the public, when we speak about the private, a lot of time as scholars, we are used to imagine that as a, a monolith, or there is the public, or there is the city government. It's not like that. Um, there are different vectors of powers that uh, are across political levels, state, city, region, but even in the same political level, in the city, even at the administrative level of the city, the same city council, not only from the political perspective that we are used to think about, but even at, from the public officer, from the sector, from the department, are different political uh, views. Even because this is another output of the neoliberal uh, revolution of this kind of uh, transformation of the public administration. 
just think about the new public management from this. And uh, so this is this mean this is mean that it's we should move from a polycentric governance, and this is something that another time Vincent Ostrom, uh, not uh, Eleanor, but they were married, worked uh, at the beginning of his career to a sort of kind of polypolitical governance instead to understand all this issue, and this will help us when we will speak about hacking. Because when you are in a system where there are different relations of powers, hacking is also a little bit simple. But you have to see at that not in the, let's say, only in the idea of power and counter power, but in the idea that the system you are going to affect to face off is across it from different perspectives. So turning back here to the Urman renewal, let's say that we love this kind of activities, perfect. But uh, the point is that when we are speaking about this sleeping giant, or we are speaking about these former places, I am paraphrasing Marc Auger, uh, changing his, uh, his words, uh, we have to understand that we are changing, we, we are speaking about the uh, place that uh, are not only buildings. They are linked from, from certain kind of function that always change in the city. Certain kind of budgeting that always changing. This is the ex NATO uh, place in my city, Naples. I am uh, in the board of uh, this authority that I was speaking before. Now the uh, uh, NATO is closed maybe in the future <laughs> they, uh, it, it can come back, right? But the problem is that this is a huge place in the center of the city. And this huge place paid every year to the public foundation linked to the services of the city, 13 million of euro for each year. Nowadays, who is the private subject or the public subject that can rent from this space with the same uh, amount of money, no one. So in this, uh, this uh, uh, make us clear that we are not only speaking about empty building, we are speaking about uh, a revolution of how the state and the cities works, their economies, uh, their even uh, uh, way of function. So in this way, I go very, very, Quick, uh, in this in, in this situation, in the cities, I'm especially thinking about Naples and Italy, but I think that is not only a problem in my studies of Italy. In the local finance, state city transfers often are decreasing. The accounting criteria, as I said before, are changing, and we can speak a lot about that. The number of public officials decreases and there is the freeze of turnover and there are more and more responsibility for public officials and managers. When we speak about the changing and experimentation of participatory practices and so on, we have always to face in our polypolitical approach that there isn't the municipality, only the political part the person who is elected. They are public officers. And in the general transformation of the balance of power between public officers and uh, 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 elected representative, a lot of time public officer act as a sort kind, let's say of defensive bureaucracy because they have huge responsibility. And this is tricky because a lot of time we think that gain the victory of an election, gain the victory means that we govern the city. The city, the city has a very, very more complex government. And not only because I repeat, there are the private powers, obviously, obvious, are also for that, but even because the public powers are very more complex. And a lot of times, even as an output of <clears throat> new public management revolution, uh, public officers in some um, uh, cities, uh, uh, I don't want to say that are more powerful that, than, than the elected representative, but quite. So in this scenario, 
there is the paradox that, at least in Italy, uh, several laws called the Federalismo de Maniale are, uh, are transferring this huge building that we are speaking about from the state property to the city property, to the regional and department property. Perfect. But in, we have the problem. We said it before. For a series of, for many, several reasons, cities doesn't have money to renew all them, restore and regenerate, and to make them function. So these help not only the selling of this real estate, and trust me, there are many, many bank and edge funds that are very, very interested on, for example, Italian uh, public assets. They always say when you are in a conference with them that why Italy have this big, big um, real estate pa uh, patrimonio and we are not able to make it function so, because they are interested to buy. But it's not simple to do that for many other several reasons that we can speak. And so the problem is how we can use and make this place function. And here, the last point that we can say, there are many scholars, for example, Bob Yesop, that are underlining how the idea of use civic regeneration, in this case, he speak about neo-communitarian approach, is the idea uh, that uh, is we are able to use uh, third sector, social, social economy, civic participation in order to empower the state responsibility and give them to the citizen. In Italy, there is a, a big literature about what we call horizontal subsidiarity, of subsidiarity sorry, that is now also a constitutional principle. This is something that we can see everywhere. A lot of time cities uh, and city government ask help to the people and the association in order to manage this kind of place exactly because they are not able to do that. And here comes to how to translate, and we arrive to the last part, and I go very quickly here of the lecture. How we translate, okay, we have focused on this uh, huge problem of the system that we want to work. But how we act that? Let's let imagine we want to make that people are able to organize, self-organize, empty building like that, doing many activities. Try also in this way to imagine a sort kind of cooperative approach that is not only a public-private partnership. There are different legal uh, and um, uh, experiment. For example, one of those, I cannot speak about all of them, but if you want, we can deepen every one of each. The, a, a such uh, call it shared administration, where, for example, an association of people answer to a public call against other association, and they uh, sign an agreement for three years, they manage the place. So this kind of, or, or for example, the other option that Hugo Mattei a lot of time foster this, this idea of imagine a sort of kind of private foundation, for example, uh, like uh, in Teatro Valle in Rome experience, where yes, it's a private foundation, we are trying to hack the private law system, but in that case, the city government sell, or better say, give, to this private foundation made by commoners, the property of the building. So every one of these uh, uh, experiment is very, very tricky. This second one is very tricky because unfortunately, the, the is, is very difficult to, uh, to manage with only the economy of these civic experiences, uh, huge buildings. So if you take that in uh, private ownership, uh, and you do activities for free, or you have to restore a huge building, probably this experience very, very soon will go to fail. And this way, 
<laughs> creditors and the other private subjects will take very soon your experience. This is also because uh, there is uh, no experience uh, today uh, that follow this uh, uh, experiment. It's different if we speak about, uh, for example, uh, community land trust and other things, but it's different. Regarding the shared administration, we have other try uh, other uh, trick experiment. I just say just to understand that when we are speaking about using always the private law in order to make that a community organize itself and create, for example, for two three years their activities. Okay, it's perfect if the community is as the community that, that we love, an open and heterogeneous community. But these are the same legal tools that are often are used, for example, for community interest development and good communities. So this is exactly one of the problem of nowadays that we are increasing this sort kind of private governance of, of part of the cities that is autonomous, like uh, quoting uh, Akin Bay, but in a different way, obviously. But this is a little tricky. All right, that can be other example. Uh, I have no time to speak about that. I'm going just to finish about some kind of alternatives. So what I think that we uh, should start is that we cannot create an um, island uh, of cooperation in desert of competition. So what we need is not to deregulate this kind of experiences that try to manage from grassroots <coughs> empty buildings and rural areas, but we have to <coughs> so <coughs> COVID disease. Um, uh, we have to um, try to uh, imagine uh, um, a sort kind of different legal tools. I will come back here, let's say, what kind of legal tools? One legal tools uh, uh, that uh, is uh, in Italy called civic use, but we have something similar really all over the world. Our ancient rights, rights of use uh, of uh, collective properties, let's say, it's a little bit more complex, but let's say in this way to understand ourselves. So in this, um, these uh, rules are uh, rules where uh, arise on private or public or even collective property and are express a qualified relationship between community and resource. So some kind of people that maybe live in that place, there are ancient rules that regulate it, have the right to take the boot had the right to enter in the forest and uh, take uh, mushrooms, have the right to use the water, have the right to take the ships in, uh, uh, in, the, in that place. So these are obviously uh, uses and rights that uh, may appear uh, very ancient, very, uh, let's say, anti-modern, right? Yes, <laughs> even all the rules are not beautiful rules. I really don't uh, I like when we try to imagine that uh, in the pre-modern times, uh, everyone go agree this was a, a perfect example of common. No, sometimes yes, but that's not the point. We have not to copy that rules. We have to imagine, and that's the point, how we can transfer to the urban area this kind of use, and how we can imagine that before the right of self-management, there is on the public and private property, the right of use of the citizens. Obviously, it should be regulated. It should be created, it should be uh, um, designed for some purposes, but here comes all the discourse about fundamental rights and their link to the, to the commons experience that in particular in Italy with the Ultra Commission, we try to develop. So what I'm trying to say is that we have to point these two big study of the commons. From one side, governance study of Elinor Ostrom, and from the other side, 
these uh, huge studies in Italy about the connection between commons as goods that are related to fundamental rights of the people, trying to put these two elements together and say, all right, there are play, there are what I call, and after I can explain better, necessary commons or emerging commons is different, but maybe I can explain if you want it better. There are kind of place that can be natural resources, not necessary commons, or urban areas, emerging commons, where the people share, first of all, the right of use, even if the public is proper, is pub, the property is public. And this is important because in this way, the public have some duties. And after we can imagine this right of management and here arrived the last element. All right, you have to set up an association as you said before, not, not necessarily. In the case of La Silo, in the case of other experience uh, that are in Naples, uh, um, we imagine that uh, the assembly of commoners can be recognized because are the rules that are recognized as territorial self-governing bodies. And in that case, these rules, just imagine 23 articles uh, that act like a little constitution, but it's not a private statute, is how it function that kind of public body institution. So is a is a sort kind of in the in between from uh, the regulation of a public park and the regulation of a city council assembly. It's something in the middle. And what is recognized is exactly this kind of uh, um, self-management experience that is not a public-private collaboration, but a direct management of the people. So it's very near to what Mire Bucin was thinking about, but this is legally translated. Uh, the reason to do that are many, just to say that this experience is not only an experience that is now in Naples, there are even in, uh, uh, this is not updated, up, updated, for example, the last regulation in Padova, is a city in the north of Italy, have taken the civic use as a, a, a possible tool. But here I finish the idea of the uh, uh, hacking that I didn't spoke a lot about that, but maybe we can return. When I say hack, uh, I say, first of all, in this case, uh, how we can imagine to convince public officer that this kind of regulation is possible. We created a legal tool, but we created a legal tool uh, as commoners, as experts and scholars, many, not only me, it's not something strange. Today, if we see the changing of the law, just Lex Mercatoria, think about that. Just think about how many new institutions are arising. I not only study commons, one of my article uh, is around, for example, uh, what I call the free trade governance. So TTIP, CETA, and the free trade agreement. So these are neoliberal hacking of democracy. I'm not saying that ideologically. It's, it's concrete. If we imagine cooperatory regulation bodies that are near, for example, the uh, European Parliament, and these cooperative bodies have really a power in the making rules, or we imagine, for example, with Maria Rosaria Ferrarese, that this important social, legal sociologist in Italy, uh, uh, speak about um, uh, Parajudicial governance. And here we can speak about international investor state uh, settle disputes. We can imagine up to many of these uh, deepened changing of uh, democracy because new institutions are arising, new kind of grassroots, technically, they are grassroots norms. We can use the idea of Albert Art as a uh, important philosophy of law that were focus, was focusing a lot on power conferring norms. So these are norms made by private subject, if, even if private subject are very powerful, and these are de facto becoming public regulation. 
So this is the first time, the, the first element of act legal. So has exactly as the neoliberal experts and scholars try to do, we kind of do the same in a different perspective. Collective and urban civic use is one example. I worked with Margarita and Andrea uh, in a project with other people and comrades um, uh, on a, a tool that I call creative and care income. That is a tool that try to hack the debate around the income. So what we want, the general basic income, yes, but we want also other kind of incomes and we can explain that. It's always the, the trying to enter in a different software and try to open it. And my last slide is this one. Uh, it's not only a problem of changing the logic of the external system, it's also a matter of changing our logic. Because when we do commoning, I wrote a book of 400 pages about that, so we can speak a lot, but when we speak about commoning, we are often speaking about something that is near to cooperation. All right, yes, but cooperation is not the same thing. Because when we imagine traditional cooperative approach that I love and defend, be clear, but in that case, the mutualistic purpose aim to provide goods and services and job opportunities even to the members of the organization directly. So it's something that is obviously linked to a certain kind. I don't want to say get at the communities because it's not like that, but it's, it's even uh, um, it, it, the, the, the most important element is to help people that is in the cooperative. For this reason, cooperative arise as a defensive tool of the working class. Here we can imagine to put this also in a sort kind of commons cooperative approach. So it's not the opposite, but it's a, I don't want to see an evolution. It's another thing that, that sometimes can help. And here the community of reference manage and taking care of the emerging commons, not only for their exclusive benefits, because that benefits that using uh, includes new common and future generation. What does it mean? That when we, I was speaking before about the rules uh, of uh, uh, this kind of emerging commoning experiences, these rules give the right of use even to newcomers and to external. So when I write, for example, the proposal to use the empty building to do an activity for doing the next time that you want to come in Naples, and this is an invite as working group, I will not decide if you can enter because I like your perspective, I like your proposals. You have the right of use it. There are some obviously regulation, there are some elements that you have to afford, but this is an open door system. So this is also a way to hack our uh, creation a lot of time of uh, um, closed system that are in competition because a lot of time in this, or even this kind of experience are in competition between myself. Uh, maybe we try to, so let's say finishing, we understood that we cannot do socialism in only one country. I think that it can be very ridiculous in we can imagine so do something similar in only one occupied place or a self-organized place. What we have to create is some kind of networking and the legal framework is one of the most important element of networking because using long from grassroots is a strategy to escape what Mark Parcel and other call it local trap. Because say claiming the same rights, the same governance tool, even in different contexts, and this can help us to create a sort kind of a scaling up that is different from the scaling up of Matroska model, because it's something more uh, spread in different, in this case, legal context, but also, as I said, political one. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry if I spoke a lot. Thank you, Giuseppe. Uh, that is wonderful. <laughs> you, I'm so sorry you are coughing. I can see, and you should totally take a break and have a drink. Um, yeah, thank you also for being with us, uh, given that you're not well, <laughs> which should be said as, um, yeah, support statement. 
Um, I wonder if, um, as, are there any like hot kind of comments or maybe requests to go uh, more in depth in some aspects? I know uh, Giuseppe went quite thoroughly through a lot of different aspects of uh, the experience. Um, okay, I I think it's Caterina with the raised hand. Uh, do you want to mute yourself? Uh, yes, it's me. Sorry, I don't know how to change my name and my phone. <laughs> um, Giuseppe, thank you so much for the talk, and Valeria, thank you so much for organizing. Um, it was a lot, so I won't pretend that I understood everything. But uh, I really like how you finished with this idea that. It's not about changing the, just about changing the practices, but about changing the logics. And I would just like to ask you more about this, this kind of, this conceptual difference, because also at the start of the talk, you spoke about kind of in a Foucauldian way about rationalities of government. And you mentioned a socialist government rationality or a socialist governmentality, which if I remember correctly, Foucault was always very clear, clear that he considers that socialism failed, is failing because it, does, it can't figure out its own rationality, whereas neoliberalism gives us such an attractive one. So if you could talk, speak more, a little bit more about this, that basically the difference from, between practices um, and, and then the rationalities of government. And I think that hacking comes into play here, but I'm not sure how. So if you could just maybe expand on this a little bit, but thank you so much. What do you prefer to collect the questions or to how do you do in general? Uh, it, it's really for you. Uh, we could, but I'm, I'm also happy to hear the reply and um, we continue. I would prefer to listen if there are more people more questions? because okay, I don't want sure. to speak too much. More, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, can you repeat your name because I lose okay. you. So this was Katerina. Katerina. Katerina, thank, sí. thank you very much. Um, maybe I could uh, just a small question with regards to, thank you very much. It's really a lot to think about and there are probably going to be like, million other questions uh, this is more of a practical one with regards you mentioned that this um, if i understood you correctly um, that the sort of legal hacks in question tend to relate to sort of uh, city property or some kind of public property right i mean and uh, in rieka for instance the the one of the main issues i mean there are many of them but one of the sort of really difficult ones is that uh, there is a lot of sort of abandoned and ruined uh, or ab abandoned by perfectly functional and usable uh, uh, buildings and sites which are under private property or under some kind of fragmented private property with sort of thousands of private different parts you know every square meter belongs to somebody else and, and stuff like that so i was just wondering about the the which the sort of approach to these kind of properties which are tend to be the most problematic because they tend to be the least used you know in in any sense so thanks can you repeat your name thank you very much sorry Marco, Marco Luca. Marco. Yes. Uh, perhaps this is also a good moment for a question that I had amongst the many, uh, which has to do with the, the very beginning institutional moments of such experiences. Um, I think I would like to hear more about your take upon the role of um, actual uh, acts of disobedience or the capacity for people to start to articulate even in proto manners some claims over these commons, uh, the urban commons especially, because I think there's like a, a passage there that we tend to give 
take more for granted, I've noticed, in the Italian context because of our specific history. And I don't think it's so uh, spontaneous or natural. I don't think that's the way to think about it. For example, in Croatia, I, in my experience, it, it, it's a completely different uh, trajectory there. So how you conceive of the role of the first instances of reclaiming or just protesting the use or, or neglect of, of uh, uh, an asset and, and the importance of intercepting that and translating that into some, and that I would be interested in how you phrase this because I stutter now, I don't have the right terms, but is it a collaboration with then jurists? Is there uh, some experts that we need to think about? Is it a grassroots organizing in the American model? Um, how it, it, and if there are conversations around these beginnings within people that are uh, particularly articulating different uh, legal tools in the document system way. Um, so that, that would be one of many things I would be interested to hear more about. Is anyone else that would like to join the conversation now or maybe Yes, even discussing together, obviously. Yeah, we can. Do you want to take maybe this first round of three questions and then okay. see where that takes us? So, thank you very much, Katarina. First, I focus on the fact that in build of politics in particular, Michel Foucault is speaking a lot about the legal framework. We know that Michel Foucault, uh, in all his research, uh, have tried uh, a sort of kind of expulsion of law. All right, there are some scholars that are trying to understand if it does or if he doesn't. The point is not that, because in that part, exactly when he speak about this kind, he say of we need to invent, we might, we should invent another kind of governmentality may be a socialist governmentality, but we are not ready to do that. So we only say that. And in that part, in, the, in, in that part of the different lessons, he was saying an important thing. Neoliberal revolution is not a revolution that say, uh, is not the less fair revolution. It's also a legal and institutional revolution. They are going to change rules and they are going to change, as is in the abstract, the role of the state. So, for example, in this case, Dardot and Laval, in their work about neoliberal rationality, do it very well. The element is that when we speak about governmentality, that is not governance, obviously, it's another thing, and you know, but let's say for everyone, is a sort kind of art of govern the freedom people is to conduct the conduct. So is not something that is made a sort of kind of government that is make that is make uh, is made by uh, you have to do that. I use the power to make you that. Is something different. Is something that let you do that and give you the opportunity to do that. All right, it's even more complex, but just to understand that when we are speaking about governmentality studies, that is a branch sector, very important of political philosophy, we are speaking about all of this. How is your question? We can imagine to use this kind of uh, um, situation because we are in a governmentality era. We have the power, unfortunately, and we see it. This is another element of misunderstanding of Michel Foucault in my perspective. He never said that the power finished. It's, it's more complex. But yes, we are even in a governmentality uh, area. So how we can conduct, conduct the freedom people to act in some way, maybe in a socialist way. For example, during the, this uh, big uh, strategy of the collective urban civic use, but even when I go to speak uh, to different municipalities, the problem of budget is a big problem. 
So they say, I cannot do that because we haven't the budget. Here, the point is uh, that we created a such kind of um, criteria. The criteria for budgeting are, 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 are everyone created. There isn't a, an, an ontologic criteria for budgeting. Yes, plus and, uh, uh, and, and, and minus, but it is not that the budget is more complex. So in this case, we invent this thing that we call civic income. What does it mean? That we convince the public officers and the public officers, even with us in this dialogue, created that. So it was a match of ideas. All right, if this is a public building and I should make it uh, functional, how much money I have to spend? There was calculated, for example, by a public official, not by me, uh, that for using the asilo, we are speaking about, uh, in that case, a building of 5,000 square meters in the Berlin center of Naples, Naples for three floor. So to use that, the administration with their classic tools would uh, expend around 1 million of euro and 300,000. If they do, with the common experience, the administration pay, in that case, 10,000 uh, um, euro a year for uh, uh, electricity and water, and they give uh, to one person the, the, this, of the administration uh, the, the work of open and lock the door for entrance, for example. So in this case, this kind of civic income is another criteria. So in this case, if you use the normal budgeting neoliberal criteria, you are giving a building for free. You cannot do that. If you start changing this accountability criteria, no, no, you are uh, having a saving of resources because you should, to make that useful, spend a lot of money and you are not doing that, you are a changing of criteria. Another example is, uh, um, for example, this, this creative and care income. When we speak about the income, uh, um, and I am uh, 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 a sustain, I, I sustain the general basic income, right? But one of the problem is that obviously we are speaking about individual income. So if we want to have an after governmentality, how we can imagine that even this kind of opportunity give to the people the opportunity to make collective action. And for example, in this proposal that we made after our long research during the pandemic crisis and cultural and cognitive workers in pandemic, my proposal with Margarita was all right, imagine that in some, there is the basic income in our utopia, but in that moment, there were also many income for cultural workers because they wasn't able to work. In many, in many countries, there, there were many, many kind of, of safety nets like that. So our proposal is, are we able to imagine that, yes, there is the safety net, but we can double the safety net. Because if I am a cultural worker, obviously, and you give me the opportunity, for example, to... Uh, to work in the crisis, but we can imagine that in, in, is not only uh, um, a budget for work and to survive in that crisis. What we can imagine to copy the idea of, for example, sabbatic system in the university, given one year every three years to cognitive workers, and obviously can be a regulation on that, the opportunity to work on their own project, and you double the income, in order to give to what we call it SOAS, so not only urban commons, but space of alternatives. So we can have different groups, association, space, material space, where these people have the opportunity to work because you cannot produce cognitive um, output only alone in your room. Even us, we are scholar, but we need Bibliotheca. We need a, a place where to share like these uh, our ideas. So this is a, was a complex proposal, but it's another uh, uh, element uh, uh, 
thoughts on how we are able to hack the logic in this case, hacking the rules. And you can see in the, in the, in the abstract, there is the link to the paper about that. So it, because it will be another lecture on that. Uh, going very, very fast, the element of uh, Marco Luca, yes, public property, you're right, even because the um, social movement when Occupy, let's say very clearly, a private uh, building is much more difficult to defend. In this case, uh, for example, we can imagine to um, impose uh, what we call in Italian servitù di uso, that I think in English, uh, I remember, is servitude of use. That is something that there is in the legal framework everywhere. And even here, we have to focus on the history of the law. Uh, in the beginning of, uh, from at the end and beginning of the last century, uh, there was a big trial in Italy of uh, Villa Borghese. Villa Borghese was uh, a huge, uh, place with a big park in the belly center of the capital of the city, Rome. For many, many years, this was a private property. The owner uh, of this uh, real estate, the Principe Borghese, uh, the, prin the Principe Borghese, okay. <laughs> the son of the king. <laughs> Prince. Prince, all right. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Uh, is, okay, let the people of Rome to enter in, uh, in this park. He, he was his uh, liberality. At a certain point, private property, a private property of the, uh, of, of, of uh, two uh, centuries ago, it was a sacral property. He said, all right, I stop this uh, um, opportunity for the people to enter because I, I just want to stop. It's my, it's my property. I can do whatever I want. In that case, there was a trial in the, the Cassazione Court that was one of the most important trial court of the people of Rome, and in particular their mayor, against the private property of Principe Borghese. After the trial that give the right of use to the people, because it was an important sentence, after years and years that was this right of use that was uh, recognized. So in this case, from this sentence in Italy uh, arise what we call uso publico, public use, that have a big history and obviously other regulation. Are we able to imagine that after a sort kind of occupation, a sort kind of praxis can be recognized? You can, you can imagine it because civic use, as I told you before, are not only on public property, but even on private property. Uh, uh, we was able to do that? No, we wasn't able yet. But for example, if you go to Montevideo, I work at the for uh, some times there, uh, and there is also there a new bar commoning experience called La Casa Feminista de las Pioniegas. Uh, There's a, a trans feminist uh, urban common with the civic use now. They won also a prize on architecture for the renewal the last year. So this, uh, the, in, 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 in Uruguay, there is an important law that after two years of abandoned building, give the opportunity to the state to take it. Even here, we can speak a lot, because even here, because before speaking about what we like, we have to understand the neoliberal hack. There were two, there were, there were two important sentences in Italy uh, that uh, you know that every time there is private property, there is the opportunity for the state to expropriare. How do you say to take it? To expropriate, to, uh, to expropriate. forcefully buy it uh, from private. Uh, this is common when people are when they're building like a road and they need to, the, to, the the right of passage and they can force you to sell that kind of principle. Exactly, there is something like that everywhere. Uh, 
the point is that you have to give back to the person and to individual that suffer this expropriation and um, it's called an indenizzo, so a sort kind of value back. There were two sentences in, in Italy, 2007, 2008, if I remember well, that are using the fundamental rights, the European, core, the European um, framework of human rights say that in that case, the person that suffer this kind of expropriation should be restored with a major value linked more near to the market value. If you do, do that, you have hacked the potential of the state to expropriate. But before do that, if we go behind Salvador Allende, for example, when he made the expropriation of uh, um, uh, uh, industry of uh, rame, uh, against the corporation that were um, foreign corporation. In that case, Doctrina Allende, so the thinking of Allende, that was also translated in a legal criteria, say, all right, we have to restore to you an amount of money because we respect this counterbalance of the expropriation. But if we do that, we have to count how much money you take in the years illegally because you take too much money because the state given you permission in a market-oriented criteria. And we know what happened to Salvador Allende. So um, this is the element of uh, hacking and counter-hacking that we are speaking about. And yes, we can do even in private property. Yes, it's very, very more difficult to do. But the day if, uh, when we are able to act private property, all right, is beyond revolution and reformism, but something more near to the first we maybe we have done. And the last point that is linked to the instituent moment that uh, uh, Valeria was uh, speaking about. Yes, the instituent moment is, 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 is crucial. And even here, I want to be clear, when we are speaking about making the rules. I know that making the rules is difficult. Uh, for the other urban commoning experience in Italy, uh, I was the head of the observatory of urban commons that was a new institution created in Naples exactly to counterbalance the neoliberal expertise. Because even a public officer, when have to sign an act, if they can say, all right, but there is this consultative body made by experts that say that we can do that, that allow us to do that. All right, we act as many neoliberal private in that case, might even sometimes public consultative bodies that uh, uh, give suggestions, right? So in that case, uh, um, uh, the, the institutional moment of making rules can take even years. For example, uh, for, uh, we had spaces where their declaration of urban and collective cyclic use, these are the rules that we're speaking about, make three, four years for being written. And we help the communities, the communities help each other. But this instituent moment is not only the instituent moment of, uh, you know, when you enter illegally in an occupied space. It's also the instituent moment of making a constitution. And there are scholars that noted that all the constitution of the world are usually more beautiful than the, the material constitution. So the formal is beautiful. Why? It's, there is a reason because when you act with what is called the, the instituent spirit, you act knowing that you're doing something important. You act pointing all what you do, this idea that you have to make a rule that will be written and read, that's very important. So the, the instituent moment is not the output, it's the praxis of discuss about the rules, thinking that you're not doing only that for you, but even for other generations. So these make a lot of time constitution beautiful. And if you are able to take this knowledge and spread it 
in many, many little societal constitution, I'm quoting Teubner, even if I don't agree with him, but just to understand uh, that this idea of, of making from grassroots uh, uh, rules is interesting because we also understand the complexity of making rules. It's not simple because it's never simple to act the thinking of your generation, but also the future one, even because the future people that arrive in the process will say, all right, I don't like this group. And these create a lot of time problems. And this is something that Elino Ostrom studied very well. So this is the complicity of democracy. If we are able to create a sort kind of new institution that are popular institution that have not the purpose of governing themselves as little republic, but exactly to understand how we can hack the system of income and civic profitability, how we can maybe tomorrow taking grant in a neoliberal grant call. All of this is, is very important. And the last point that you very well uh, underlined is uh, uh, how we can uh, organize all this legal framework. All right, I can answer first of all, that uh, uh, we can, there are many scholars, uh, books, and many comrades that work together. Here, for example, I see Gabriella, that is a, a friend and a comrade and a scholar uh, and a cultural producer of La Silo too. So we have in contact uh, also with international experience. But what is more important, and this is my last point, because in your country, we can do that is that, you know, sometimes it happens that uh, there are elections and uh, there are municipalist uh, uh, parties, group and uh, uh, civil society uh, collectives that won the election. What we have to do is to use that moment, that is a good moment, to make exactly what neoliberal have done when Touch and Reagan won the election. They use Reagan and Thatcher to foster the neoliberal praxis. All right, hack the same thing. When we have the opportunity, one time is in Naples, another time in Zagreb, another time in Barcelona, to do something, please do that because it's not only Zagreb, it's not only Naples, it's a precedent. And when we are speaking about legal tools, the precedent is something very, very powerful. And if we are able to create from grassroots people from different cities, from different countries that work to the same rule, I work to rule with, uh, with Athen people or for, with the uh, Uruguayan people, Brazilian people. If you work in an international level for the rule of that city, you are not only sharing a precedent, but you are making from grassroots that our idea of internationalism, that in this case is not only the claiming of rights, but it's the claiming of new institution, as exactly as neoliberal, uh, lear, uh, we learned from neoliberal thought, creating a new institution is uh, the element that is very important in revolution. We knew that because when uh, there was the idea of revolution, it go at the same level of uh, utopia of the Soviet, for example, of the utopia of direct democracy. And every time that we fail to create an institution, we fail the revolution. So probably uh, to be concrete, starting from um, sort kind of hacking approaches, we can try to spread not only one good legal tool, but a methodology of hacking that can put together very different people. Yeah, uh, no. yeah thank you, Giuseppe. Um, yeah, you, you're making me think of like a million other questions, but we'll keep them for the pub next time we, we see each other. Uh, I have maybe, going towards the conclusion, I have maybe one more question that I will read to you from uh, Tena, or maybe you can also read it yourself, but uh, just to... Uh, to do some uh, emceeing here. Uh, and maybe this could be a way to, to end our reflection. So uh, she's asking if you could comment on the role of money laundering specifically in the processes you're describing and thinking about. Uh, how did it impact the evictions, in the geographies you've studied, 
any successful examples maybe of tackling this problem from below through urban commons? Thanks. And to give you uh, some context, I should also add that Tena looks specifically at uh, the um, illegal appropriations of elites, especially from, uh, I would say, Eastern European uh, geographies. Uh, yeah, I hope I don't misrepresent your, your research, Tena, but she, she has a specific interest in this question of, of tracing the money threats, basically, in power dynamics. So in this case, uh, if I understood well, uh, is also how the influence, for example, of money from criminal organization and illegal powers in, and corporation use this uh, money laundering you are facing about this, right? Okay. If it's so, uh, what I can say is first, uh, there is another important legal tool in Italy about the regeneration process and the reuse of abandoned space that are not abandoned, but come exactly from criminal organization. These are called the confiscated assets regulation. So when you want to... Perfect. When you want to face uh, the... Um, the, the criminal organization, you have to take their money and even their property. So before the legal tools like urban commons, sharing administration and, and so on, there was in Italy this special regulation that give for free to people and association and groups, cooperative, the opportunity to reuse um, assets that can be a building, but even not a building, uh, uh, um, mobile assets uh, to uh, taken from the criminal organization. Here you have other kind of problems because first there is the risk that the person and the criminal organization will knock your door and will say, this is mine, this is the first. And the second one is that is very difficult for all of these civic reuse to uh, survive uh, because they are in a marketplace. So even if I do a cooperative with, with the Valeria, that is a very beautiful cooperative uh, selling, for example, a rural product in a territory in an area where before there was the ownership of a criminal organization, it is very, very difficult. So even for this uh, reason, uh, we have to imagine to engage the state, to engage the, um, uh, the, the general budgeting in order to support that. And regarding the uh, laundering, money laundering in urban commoning experience, we don't have for the simple reason that these are a lot of time experience with very, very, very few, few uh, money. But we have other kind of problems with criminal organization because obviously an open space can be permeable also to them. And this is another big issue, but it's different from the finance and the budgeting element. But just to say that even for about this, we can experiment. For example, I love sailing. And one project that I have now is to imagine to work on a boat that can be taken from criminal organization because criminal have also the boat, and to create a cooperative governance of 50 people of this sailing boat in order to create a governance, even because when we speak about sailing, we speak a lot about a lot of governance and so on. But this is just to say that uh, in particular uh, in Italy, there are rules about that, that try to reuse abundant space exactly in that case. But the, 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 the it's very difficult that, uh, and last point, sorry, because maybe you were asking also this, when uh, uh, you have private public asset and you want to sell it, it's very difficult that criminal organizations are able to take because a lot of time we are speaking about uh, sleeping giants. 20,000 square meter in the center of the neighborhood. So there are many eyes on that. Is 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 danger for a crime organization to open your space. It's more simpler for them to go to rural area and make not from the public and the state, but directly from private uh, an asset. They are interested in that.
Thank you, Giuseppe. On this note of the boat, uh, I must uh, uh, say we just missed a great opportunity because there was uh, one of these uh, mega yachts from uh, Viktor Medvedchuk, uh, who is one of the Putin allies in, in Ukraine, uh, docked in Rijeka for a while, and we were hoping to stage some action. But uh, I heard that unfortunately it left. We don't know where, but. For next time next we thought uh, something similar <laughs> <laughs> yeah um now that is a great development unexpected development for the ending the talk about how can we extend this commoning logic to the seas that are in dire need of attention in these transnational spaces too um yeah it's half past so i think people are probably getting hungry and getting on with the day uh I once again thank you for your time and uh, I know it feels always especially in zoom that there are beginning beginnings of many talks that could possibly take place and continue um, and for sure we'll make sure that this is the case uh, if anybody wants to be in touch with Giuseppe please fellows get in touch with me I can uh, hopefully uh, create connections um, yeah and the talk is recorded so uh, it will live on in the cyberspace uh okay thank you so much everyone thank you too thank i hope you. i hope to see to see you <laughs> yes yeah, we hope to see you in the echo or in today's take Indeed. care thank you take care thank you so, bye thank, thank you. you goodbye